Good morning, everyone. Welcome to JFall. It's my first time actually at JFall, and I'm already falling in love with this conference. It's great energy. I was here actually last year, uh, last uh, evening for the dinner. Also, wonderful people. So I think today is going to be even more awesome. A little bit about me. Um, Sabi is the shortened version of my name. My full name is uh, Sabia Sachi. And no, I am not named after a Japanese sushi. <laughs> it's actually a name of a warrior in India. So I am here to take you on a war front. What I do, I'm working at RBN Amro Bank in the innovation team. We're working, creating new ideas, new products. And besides that, I'm also a storyteller, and I also have a podcast channel called Method in Madness, where I interview various kinds of people, athletes, actors, uh, sportsmen, entrepreneurs, to understand best practices of change, transformation, and what I want to talk to you about. But before I do that, I know it's fall, and maybe a little hard to imagine if you have seen the last two days weather in the Netherlands, but imagine a spring day. A spring day, green grasses, flowers blossomed, fresh air. How does it feel? It's nine in the morning. We need to get the uh, you didn't respond to me. How does it feel? Awesome, right? Now imagine you time traveled. I take you to 1800. You are in the spring of 1800 when there is no pollution. There are no cars. There is nobody knows what is uh, you know carbon dioxide. The air is fresh. How does it feel now? Better? I heard better. I take that. Now let me add one more layer to this complex situation. I take you to India, my hometown. Now how does it feel? <laughs> yes. Now I take you to Delhi, the capital of India, in the 1800 in the spring. You are walking on the grass. You're walking on this luscious green grass on a park, beautiful flowers, the air is fresh, and suddenly, Something wiggle past your toe. Do you know what that is? It's a cobra. Are you scared? Just few people are scared, not everybody. That's a good sign. <laughs> and what would you do to get rid of these cobras? Run, yes. Cobras can outrun you sometimes. What else would you do? Sorry? Speaking. Kicking. Okay, speaking would not help with cobras. They cannot hear. <laughs> Kicking might help, but... So, you know, in the 1800, in the British rule India, cobras were actually a big problem. And the Britishers were extremely terrified of this cold, stone-cold creature. They had no idea how to deal with it. They were frightened, scared, and they did the smartest thing like they always do. They introduced a bounty, a new method. Anybody who brings a dead cobra will be rewarded. You kill a cobra, bring it to a British officer, you will get money. What a great idea. Sorry? S start reading them. So yes, what happened is, this worked in the short term because, you know, you're killing cobras, cobras are going down, excellent. But there was a problem. The smart, in intelligent Indians saw this as a business opportunity and started breeding more cobras. <laughs> now, the more cobras, the more money, the more bounty. It took British administration some time to realize the problem. And when they realized, they abolished the reward system. Now you don't get paid for killing cobras. And now, there are more cobras than ever before. <laughs> British administration has already run out of money. And the problem is bigger than it was. This phenomenon is actually called the cobra effect. It was coined by a German economist. This is a situation where people jump to solutions without having true understanding of the problem. They think the only way to solve a problem is to just pump fund. Let's pay, let's uh, spend more money, and the solution will come in itself. The good thing is, this happened only in 1800. It doesn't happen today. 
Why are you laughing? It does happen. At least that's what we know. Our projects and everything is getting delayed. Let's move to a new way of working. We are lacking innovation and new ideas. Let's hire a new consultant. We don't bring new ideas, innovation. Well, give Apple Watch to the person who comes up with a brilliant idea. We lack diversity and inclusion. Yeah, let's hire one Indian guy and now you're super diverse. <laughs> this is happening everywhere. We jump to solutions without understanding the problem. This happens in every field. What happens then is, you see this, this line. This is the Cobra FX line, where initially you do see some benefits coming out of it, but soon, and you don't even have to go in the long run, you've spent a lot of money, but your expectations have not been met. Today I'm here to tell you that, how can we achieve this kind of change and transformation without spending money? Of course, you have to spend money at some point. Without understanding the true problem, just pumping money, how we can do that. We are in a conference with wonderful people, so my idea towards you is not just for your company, but also towards yourself, how you can benefit most out of this day with that mindset, so when you go home today, you have learned a lot and you know what next steps you need to do to make that change in your organization, make that change in yourself. Are you ready? Yes. Come on, a little louder. Are you ready? Yes. That's more like it. So, like I said, I, I have a podcast channel where I have interviewed people from various fields and it's always fascinating to hear transformational journeys from athletes, actors, very people from different, different fields. And based on that, there are three things, three most essential things that can help us in this part of journey. The first one, it won't surprise you. People, can you make a journey or a change possible without the help, collaboration of people? This audience looks a little confused about the question. You don't work with people a lot? Do you guys like people? I see some debates going on here and there. But I do see some laughter, so I take that as a yes. I take that as a conditional yes. Is that something you agree with? Now, one of the things uh, I have noticed is in these journeys, not everybody in the group is taken towards it. You imagine a new idea, your boss comes and gives you a new idea, a new way of working. How many of you will feel motivated to immediately jump and be part of this journey? I won't. You guys will? So what is that is missing that will make you want to be part of this tsunami of change? Sorry? Involvement, there are very, and, and there is no one right answer. It depends on the person. But the most important thing that leadership has to do is understand the people, listen to them. Now, if you live in the Netherlands, you probably know that's not one of the virtues of people in Netherlands. You know that famous saying about Dutch people? I live in the Netherlands, I'm technically Dutch, so I can say it. Dutch people, wooden shoes, wooden head, and wooden listen. Please don't quote me on that. I will be kicked out of the country. <laughs> it's already on Twitter. I am going to send a mes message to Elon Musk. Uh, please tell me you have a blue tick and you have to pay for it. With people, once you know your people, you know how to plot them. Now, something I found very interesting in my research is called the skill will curve. Anybody heard of it? Please raise your hand. Some, I'm gonna tell you again. What is a skill will curve? Very simple, just plot your people according to the will, which is uh, the y-axis and, uh, and skill. So if you see the, let's say the green box, that is somebody with high skill and high will. So if whenever there is a new idea, new concept, this person is ready to do it. What do you need to do with such people who are always energetic, who wants to drive every change? Just empower them, 
Give them the freedom to make decisions. Give them the freedom to make choices. When you empower them, they will go above and beyond to contribute to the cause. What about the orange box? That is somebody who has high will, but low skill. Maybe he's not aware of the topic. It's something new for them. They need guidance. The blue box, somebody with lots of skill, but less will, bored, doesn't want to do. They needed to be motivated, inspired to be part of this change. And someone who has low will, low skill, they don't deserve to be shown the door, but they, de they deserve to be directed, told what to do, so that they can also be part of this journey. So the first thing is people. I believe in taking everyone, everyone in the group together. And when we do together something, it's a guaranteed success. The second thing is, start with the why. I don't start with the why, I always start with the people, but the second thing is definitely with the, with the why. Now I'll give you an example. I recently saw this uh, painting, and I really, really wanted to buy it, and it's an expensive painting. So I asked one of my friends who's an artist that, bro, do you think this is a good investment? I love this because it is a beautiful painting with my favorite color, blue. My friend asked me, yeah, why is this blue your favorite? He said, because it talks, it's the sky blue there and the ocean blue. And when they mix sky and ocean, it gives me the perfect feeling. Really? Why is then the sky blue also at the bottom? You don't see the sky at the bottom of the ocean. Why is it there? Maybe the painter wanted to show the sea and the sky mixing. But then why is the blue on top not calm? Because the sky is calm. And I didn't have the answer. And that was the trick. Don't just ask one why, ask three whys. When you have answers to the three whys, why, why, and why, you know this is going somewhere. If the, if, if the uh, answer stops at why and why, we need to save cost. We need to do because the competitors are doing, you know, that is not a good answer. If you don't get answers to three whys, maybe it's not that wise to invest in that, this idea. And the last thing I want to talk about is skills. Why is a skill so important? You know, uh, actually skill is sometimes misunderstood what people mean by skill. One of my mentors in India once told me, success is a product and not a sum, a product of three things your merit, your effort, and your luck. Now luck is unpredictable, we cannot control it. Merit, we all have more or less the same. It is the effort that where we can tweak and get maximum success out of it. That got me thinking, how do we measure the effort that we are putting? Because effort has a direct correlation with your skills. So I created this matrix, it's, it's kind of upside down matrix because generally in any graph, if you go right or on top, it's positive. It's the other way around here. So the horizontal line represents the goals and tasks. On the right, you have the goals and tasks that are you already have, things that you have vision for, things that you want to do on your bucket list already. On the left are goals and tasks that you, you don't have immediate, immediate priority, things you do not foresee yourself doing, or you don't have a strong purpose for it. And on the vertical line is time. Top is where you don't have time for, and at the bottom is where you spend maximum time with. If you see number C, C is the core. This is where you have the combination of all your goals and tasks, and you have all the time. This is where we spend most of our time. Most of our time is spent in doing the core activities, because that gives us the bread and butter. D is the things that you do because you have time, but they don't always add value or purpose to your plan, to your career plan, to your plans of the organization. A, is, A are things that you want to do, things on your 2023 bucket list, but you have no time for doing it. And B, is the blue sky, something you do not have goals for so you, and you do not even have time for. Now what I would like you to do today is you will go from every booth to booth, look, getting inspired with new way of working, new ideas, new technologies. What I want to do, what I would want you to do is if you feel inspired by anything, if you feel this is something I would like to know, learn, 
See where you could fit that. Is it something core? Is it a core activity that you can immediately start doing from tomorrow? Is it something that you would want to learn more, know more, but you have no time for it? Or is it something that you actually have time for, but it does not have immediate purpose to your trajectory to something you want to do? You see, when you plot this graph, you will actually be able to see how much time you're spending, time and uh, energy you're spending on your day-to-day -day basis. We can also plot that on an organizational level, and you will see how much time is spent on just the C, on doing the core activities. Because of that, the A and B are often ignored. A and B are the places where you have potential to innovate. This is where you think big, you think large, and if there is no time left for A and B, you will feel not fulfilled. Mind you, you should keep still doing the D, something that is not, uh, does not serve you an immediate purpose, but you should still do it. You know why? Because sometimes when you learn something that's not in your immediate uh, horizon, it will be your biggest asset in tough times. Who remembers the Karate Kid and that famous kick? Have you all seen Karate Kid, the old one? That was a skill, that was a D that he learned that he didn't need. But when chips were down, the D is what helps you come back and bounce back. So today, spend time to know uh, how you are spending your time. Now, let me do a live a demonstration with you because I have, let me move this, oops, yes. Let me do a live demonstration with you. What happens when you have people, you have the why, and you have the skill? We have the people here. Let me group this people in two parts. So from this line, I will call you left, and from this line, I will call you right. So when I say everybody left, please left, raise your left hand. Uh, you are actually right, by the way. And now, uh, uh, team right, if you can raise your right hand. Already, I know the two groups. Why am I doing this? Because this is the first talk of the day. We need to pump energy. I cannot leave you sleeping. Why? Because if you're energetic, you will feel uh, energetic to absorb all the knowledge, all the amazing talks that are coming after me. And why? Because we have an amazing lineup. We have amazing speakers that's going to be entertaining and enlightening you throughout the day. Three whys there. Skill. What I want to teach you today. Simple, clapping, a very, very essential skill. But you've been clapping all day. Who doesn't know how to clap here? Uh, something in that line helps. <laughs> well, let me teach you another clap, a single clap. Just take your hands like this and smash it when I say three. One, two, one, two, good. And now, let's try in groups. When I raise my left hand, the left group smashes, and when I raise my right hand, the right group smashes. Clear? <laughs> I told you, you need to stay awake, you need to focus. Let's try one more time. Thank you. Now you see, with all the three things, you created music. So you should clap for yourself for doing that. <laughs> Let's rock today, ladies and gentlemen. Let me leave you with a final thought, something that has always inspired me throughout my life, something it comes from my uh, home country, India, something my mom always taught me every time I felt scared to try something new, every time I felt skeptical to do something. Even today, when I felt skeptical to coming in front of 1,800 people, said one thing, doesn't matter what you do, always take chances in life, because if you win, you can lead. If you lose, you can guide. So let me guide you or lead you with this thought. Have a great uh, day today, learn, laugh, and have a great time. And I will see all of you very, very soon. Thank you so much for listening.